this is my first generation oil burner. And as you can hear, that flame is pretty loud. What I have done is I have put, I'm using the hair dryer for air only. I just Okay, so here is my uh, oil burner. Uh, I ran it through a few test cycles here. Basically, it's a coffee can. This is, again, just a test burner. Um, right here, you have a hole for air. I'll explain that in a minute. And here is a hole where you insert your fuel. Now, there's no wick. It's just simply put in here just drip down the bottom. There's usually a, a thin layer of oil on the inside. As the oil gets hot, it vaporizes, and you'll get to see that in a minute, and the vapors combust. Um, but that wouldn't work without fuel. So, this is just simply uh, used engine oil from all sources, you know, whatever cars I can get my hands on, I'll take the oil out of. And Here's my feed pump. That's a copper tube because it was the only thing I had that would stay straight and not curl. That goes down at the bottom and is simply screwed on. The second hose, the thinner one, goes up and over. That's for air. Um, since I have no pump, I'm going to use compressed air as the driving force. Um, and that's for the fuel. I'm going to screw that on there and I'm going to show you how it's assembled and fired up. Okay, now that that's screwed on, I'm going to assemble this. Now this hose here, which is for the compressed air, just simply gets plugged in. Okay, that's plugged in. Now, the tube that feeds the fuel will be pushed in here. Now, the reason I use the thicker tube, come on, get here. There, like that. Just goes in the side. Very crude setup, but again, it's trial. Um, the reason I used the thicker hose is because the oil was a little bit too thick to run through this thin hose without creating excessive pressure and since this is just a plastic can I don't want to put any more pressure than I have to. I've had it over 20 psi and it, nothing's happened but it starts to leak and I don't want to waste any air. Ideally this container should be airtight. You're just using the compressed air is a driving force you're not actually going to consume it or you shouldn't this does leak a little bit but I'm gonna fix that if I can get this thing to work now I'm gonna put a small stack on it which is just simply another coffee can but ideally 
you'd want to have some kind of a heat exchanger and so forth but so anyhow that's my stove I'm gonna set the pressure regulator now the more pressure the faster the delivery the less pressure the slower the delivery if I can get the camera to focus probably not I'm not really sure if this gauge or how accurate it is but basically I'm gonna set the gauge to about 15 pounds it may or may not be 15 pounds but it should be kind of close within five I'm hoping uh, but anyhow that all my experiments are going to be based on that gauge now I got my air which is simply a hair dryer with a piece of metal pipe taped to it and the hair dryer has the heater disconnected so it's just running the fan so we're really not pulling any electricity I have tried it preheating the air it didn't really make a difference so I just connected the heater to save electricity now with the regulator set I'm going to open a valve and prime it and just let some fuel you'll get to see hopefully the flow that off to make it easier to see. That's about how much fuel I'm using for this experiment. Obviously you can go up or down but that's about where it is. It's a steady stream. And I'm going to put this back on. And I'm going to just coat the bottom in oil by tipping it and shaking it. I'm going to remove this. Actually, yeah. Now the fuel is still going in. Okay. Now the bottom is semi-coated in oil, so I'm just going to take a torch. Now that the bottom's coated in oil, I still have fuel dripping in there. However, if it goes beyond a certain point, you might want to shut it off. So it's going to you can always take the uh, hair dryer out; it makes it a little easier for this step. Now since there is a can in the bottom, it'll burn on its own. It's going to burn at a slower rate and it's going to smoke quite a bit, as you can see. And with that fuel delivery rate, it will overflow. But by adding air, it increases the rate of combustion, it adds more heat, and it does a lot of good things. We're going to start off on low. Always start off on your hair dryer on low, or if you have some kind of other forced draft fan, put some kind of a speed control. Once it starts going, I usually shut the fuel off and let the air out of the tank. Let the excess fuel burn off. Because there, you need a good amount to get it going, but once it's going, you don't need to drip as much in. When that starts to die down, I'll put the fuel on and I'll click it on high. Actually, I could probably click it on high now. If you click it too soon, whoops. I'm going to turn the fuel back on. If you click it too soon, you'll spatter all over or put it out. And actually, I didn't really see that much smoke. I'll show you at the end of the video what's actually burning. That's the best that's ever lit. However, seeing that I didn't burn, really, I didn't even burn four quarts of oil. I got a lot of carbon. That may be due to the fact that it's used engine oil, but I'm thinking more along the lines of incomplete combustion. And if you look, unfortunately, that's what's in the can.